creating a first building with architectures. In this video, and in some upcoming ones, we are going to carry out a practical example by creating a building with our platform step by step. In this first video, we will focus on the plan view mode, at the root or site level, and on the auto editing mode. We will start with the input panel. First, we find the upload site, this is not mandatory, but its use is very interesting and helps us contextualize our project. We can load geometric data for use and visualization in the project from DWG or DXF documents in version 2018 or earlier. Currently, the import does not support text objects or blocks, which we will have to save as exploded. To load the file, we must first use the Load button. After explaining the process in a pop-up, a Windows Explorer will open for us to search for the file and load it. Immediately, we will not visualize any geometry from the loaded file, this is normal, we must individually call the different layers contained in the file. Depending on the section where we load it, its content will become one type of object or another, plot layer, any closed polyline will be recognized as a plot. Buildings layer, it will be imported as a reference to generate the building. Reference layer, it serves to import any geometric information that we want to use as a visual reference. We can switch from one layer to another, but we can only visualize one at a time. Therefore, we must group in a single layer of the DWG or DXF all that geometry that we want to visualize at any given time. Basement layer, any closed polyline will be recognized as a basement. Then it will be used along with existing buildings to create the basement floor. Environment layer, we can load 2D or 3D geometry of the built environment. Next, in the input panel, we find the targets, only for reference. In this section, we can define reference data for our project through a series of metrics. From this data, we will be informed of how far or close our current project is to the marked objectives through a color code. On this case, we are going to aim to reach a total of 100 apartments with 3 or 2 bedrooms. The plot area, having loaded it from the environment, is automatically filled in. And finally, we will aim for a minimum of 100 parking spaces and 100 storage rooms. The next tab of the input panel is the deduction coefficients. Here, the percentages used to calculate the computable area from the constructed area according to the use of space are defined. This affects the calculation of computable areas that we can see in the data panel boxes. These coefficients can change depending on the urban conditions of our plot and local regulations, their impact is very important to determine the profitability of a project and consequently, it is recommended to check that these coefficients are correctly configured before starting to create buildings. In this case, we are going to keep those configured by default by the platform. Next, we find the areas excluded from zoning floor area. The options in this section allow us to subtract a certain area per unit from the computable area. We can define a different amount depending on the type of floor they belong to, penthouse, standard, or ground floor. This option can be useful to take into account for calculation purposes some regulations that allow subtracting a certain area for one reason or another, but this time we are not going to introduce any excluded surface. The next tab corresponds to the staircase parameters. In this section, global parameters common to all stairs in the project are defined. On this occasion, we are going to adjust the minimum vertical clearance of the default staircase to 2.60 meters to ensure that the stairs meet the minimum free headroom, we will adjust the default tread to 0.29 meters, and then the riser, the thickness of the staircase slab, and the number of basement floor steps we will keep by default. If these values are changed after creating buildings, it is necessary to provoke a recalculation of the buildings created previously. Otherwise, these new values will not be updated in those buildings. One way to do this is, for example, by modifying the length by adding a zero in the third decimal. In this way, the building is recalculated with exactly the same inputs. Finally, from the tabs exclusive to the root or site level, we find the advanced controls, here we find the controls that regulate the boundary between the representation in one color or another. 
The limit value is the value of the difference between the metric required by the AI and the actual metric obtained in the current design. There are controls for both the area metric and the minimum dimension. Regarding the data panel, as you can see, it is shown blank. This is because we have not yet incorporated any building, at the moment we do, it will be enabled automatically. We encourage you to continue watching the next video to learn more about our platform.